Here's the harsh truth. Layoffs occur when your perceived value is far less than it costs them to keep you around. This is why with all layoffs you've seen, it's never 100% their staff as they are keeping around who they deem as essential and high value. In this video, I'm going to break down 12 tips to becoming virtually indispensable in sales. Or if you're starting a new opportunity, this is going to be 12 tips to help you make a massive impact and stand amongst even the most tenured reps. Starting with number one, deliver on your revenue contract. This is going to be hard. I want you to go to the bathroom and look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you doing whatever it ethically takes and that does not hurt others to get the best possible results? Now, do not sell yourself that you are. Pull aside all the excuses and reasons why you are not where you want to be and look in the mirror. Because the reality is that in a sales role, delivering on results is your number one KPI. So if you're not delivering on that, if you're not one of the best, you'll always be at risk. When cuts are being made, they always start at the very bottom of the rankings report. Tip number two, do what is expected. This may blow some people's minds, but are you doing what's expected for everything your job bosses require? Whether it's being punctual, doing your CRM, making cold calls, being timely with deliverables, properly communicating to boss, etc. Are you doing what is expected? The reality is that your direct boss usually has the most influence on your future. So you want to obviously make them happy. And the funny thing is that it's shocking what? how simple it can be to make your boss happy when you simply do what is expected of you. And if you're not sure, just simply ask them what they expect. Don't overcomplicate it. Now you had it right, just do it. Tip number three. Do more than is expected that adds insane value. Now, if only a small percentage actually do what's expected, how many actually do more than expected? It's the one percenters that are the ones that do more than what the rest of the world do. Therefore, create value by doing what is expected and then building on that. And what you want to think is this. How can I solve my leadership team's problems and bring them more value? For example, when I was a sales intern, one of my responsibilities along with the full-time employees was to sell insurance to our customers. Now, I was pretty fortunate to be pretty successful and I was one of the top reps every single month in our region. I also noticed that there was a specific pattern of how I approached each pitch that allowed me greater success than my peers. Therefore, I went to my direct manager and asked her if I could help with the training of some sort. She was astonished that I brought this idea up, but was really very thankful as she saw I ultimately want to help our operations succeed. Within a week, I put on a simple training for the rest of the team, and immediately after, we saw a positive upward trend in sales. But I want you to keep in mind here, I didn't just recommend some idea. Everyone has ideas. I got results first, and then I taught what I was doing. It wasn't theory, but a proven and systematic process. Tip number four, be a student of the game. If you want to become indispensable, it is not just what you do when everyone's watching, but also what you do when no one is watching. Take the time to invest in yourself, in your field, to become better. This ultimately helps you over deliver on your revenue contract. Whether this is benchmarking, researching, studying, reviewing the notes from the day, role playing, practicing scripts, reading books, investing in coaches, mastermind programs, etc. Treat your career like you did in school. You had classes every single day, but you also had homework and reading to help you learn and apply the knowledge. If you're going to be working eight hours a day, you might as well be at the top of your game. Tip number five, treat everyone like they'll be your boss one day and build advocates. This is a valuable lesson and advice that I received from my very successful area manager early on. Simply put, treat everyone like they'll be your boss one day as they eventually may. This is regardless if they are the custodian, an associate, a manager, a director, a VP, etc. It does not matter. Treat everyone with great respect and build advocates all around you. This becomes a moat around you to protect you. When you go through challenging times like company layoffs or options for promotions, it is your advocates that will support and protect you. And on the flip side, if you haven't been doing it, regardless of your results, you'll be at higher risk of getting cut. Tip number six, help others. This ties into tip number five. The more people you help to become successful, the more successful you will become. 
Also, when you help others, do not ask for anything in return. This is a simple tip but easily overlooked. The more you give, the more you get. Here's a perfect example. In my last organization, I love to create and put a world-class sales trains for my direct team. If I created a great training that I knew other sales leaders would probably benefit from, I would immediately share it with them as I want them to benefit as well. So when it came time to put in an interview for my next position, I went to as many sales leaders asking for their support, my peers. As a result, 100% of them offered full support and asked me if they could do anything to help me. The more you give, the more you get. Tip number seven, follow the rules. This may be a shock for some people, because even if you do one through six and you provide world-class insane results, you're number one in every single bucket, you still need to follow the rules. If your company has rules and policies, you must adhere to them still. You don't want to be known as the gunslinger or mercenary who thinks they're above everyone else. Unless you are the founder of the company, you, you must, must follow the rules. the rules. However, just like anything else, if the rules do not make sense, you do want to make sure you influence up and discuss it with your sales leader as there are exceptions to every rule. Tip number eight, invite yourself and multi-thread. In your organization, I'm sure there are other departments or meetings or influencers or decision makers that you do not know or know well. If so, invite yourself to meet them or join other meetings. The more you learn and a larger network you build, the more it'll help you building your reputational equity. Obviously, make sure you're asking the right people if you can join those means as well. Here's a perfect example. At one of the companies that I worked for, when I first started, I knew our service department, who's responsible for customer success, would run a weekly service meeting at 5.30 a.m. for all the route reps. I also knew that our service director, general manager, service manager, plant manager, and other route reps would be present. Even though there was not a direct impact to my role as an outside sales professional, I still attended each meeting as they helped me learn the business faster and build relationships with other key partners. Nobody invited me, but I asked if I could join. Within nine months, I was running the sales department. Tip number nine, seek feedback. This is a big one. We often only see things from our perspective. You must constantly seek feedback to become better and improve yourself. Once you seek feedback from those things from below you, laterally and above you, you must take active steps to execute on the feedback or you'll lose others' trust in you if you don't. And as you progress in your career and as your organization grows, you must constantly seek feedback. Feedback leads to growth and growth makes you more valuable and indispensable. Tip number 10, influence in all directions. Ask yourself, how effective are you in the influence people above you? How effective are you in influencing people lateral to you? How effective are you in influencing people below you? To progress and develop in your career and to become indispensable, you must be effective at all those levels. More than likely, your direct boss does not want a yes man or a yes woman. They will want someone to bring new ideas to the table that will positively impact results, which ultimately makes you and them look good. This makes you more valuable. This doesn't happen overnight. So the first nine tips are critical for this. When you learn how to bring value to all levels, it will only help your future by reducing your risk and increasing your upside. Tip number 11, be positive and a team player. The power of positivity goes a long way. This 11th tip ties into the other past 10 tips because when you work for an organization for a company, your ability to build relationships is critical. Your positivity should make you a person that others want to be around or even become. Your decisions must be for the greater good to avoid looking selfish. You want to avoid negative people and avoid being a negative person. Although some will feed on negativity, it will not help you if you are spreading it. And here's the reality. You can be the number one rep at your company generating millions of dollars, but if the wrong person thinks you're a negative POS, chances are good you're gonna get cut. Now, the more authentically positive you are, the harder it'll be for others to hate on you. However, keep in mind, of course, when you are massively successful, you will have haters too, but it's better to have them hate on you for being massively successful versus hate on you because your personality sucks. Tip number 12, be the real you. This last one is a simple one, but can be the hardest as some people have a home personality and a work personality. Now, this is something I personally struggled with for a long time, but once I learned to start to share more of myself, it actually helped others connect with me more, and that's ultimately what it's all about. Oftentimes, when you start becoming successful, others will not know the struggle or hard work you put in to get there. 
So don't be afraid to share the struggles as it ultimately help others connect with you. And thus, the deeper relationships you build, the bigger the moat around you. Now, if you execute these 12 tips consistently and flawlessly, your chances of getting laid off are so much less than the majority of reps out there as they are simply unwilling to do these things until it's usually too late. The value you are bringing far exceeds 99% of the reps out there. And it's not just a little bit of value, it's exponentially more. It's actually the exact things that I did to get promoted 10 times in 10 years into super competitive Fortune 500 organizations with tens of thousands of employees, even through the last recession. Now, I want to be 100% real with you here. Even if you do all these things and by some slim chance they let you go, there's a few things to understand. Number one, you've now focused on what you can control regardless of your circumstances and not what you can't control. This is how winners think. Number two, the skills you've now developed and stacked will be in such high demand because you've been so intentional, you'll be able to secure another role quickly. This is why you see winners they always keep winning regardless of what they do, even if the current opportunity dries up. Now, if you want to ensure you deliver on tip number one, delivering your revenue contract, I'll see you in this next video here.